Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Xavier's Journey, uh, where people are listening. Uh, well, okay, God, here we go. Sorry. Can we do this over? Okay, anyway, thank you for everyone to tuning in. While um, I'm talking, people are listening. I am Xavier's Journey, and this is my panelists, uh, Mr. John Bryce, Dr. Watson, Nancy Watson, and Dr. D. Smith. So we're just we're, we're celebrating Happy Father's Day for all the good fathers that you know raising their children, and we're gonna also do Happy Juneteenth also. So we're gonna just have a conversation and celebrate the fathers today. And I just want to dedicate this um, Father's Day show to my dad, dad um, Pastor Stanley R. Simpson. And John and Dion, you know, you can shout out to your fathers too. I shout out Bishop Howard Crosby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, Bishop Eric Jones. <laughs> well, and, and I shout out Deacon John Bryce. So I'm actually a junior. Oh, oh nice. Junior. All right. Thank God. So I I wanted to ask a question. Um, what what is, you know, I know how we were all raised in the church. So how I was raised where, you know, God in, inspired, um, put his spirit into fathers to raise the, their children. So what do you think the role as a father for his daughter and his, his son, what is the role of the father to raise his children? So I'll ask John, cause you're the, you know, you're, you know, the other brother on the phone, on the, on the panel. <laughs> so, I think that I, I want to go. I want to start with this. I think that we still we can't keep quantifying fatherhood based off exposure and experience. It's it's no matter what it is, it's still a father. Whether you are in the individual's life or you're not, you start off as a father because with two created one. Mm -hmm. So because I think it mixes up, it muddies the water. Then I think when you go to the examples of, of fathers, the examples of fathers is truly based off children that you're raising, the environment that you're raising them in. There's not a standard, basic standard that's universal for all, if that makes sense. Right. Because I, I, I dread Father's Day. I dread Father's Day because I don't look at any social media and I know I'm going to get bash for saying this but it's still father's day you can't say my deadbeat father you know i'm a mother and a father no it's just father's day it's one day right and i think if you do that it recognizes the individuals like i don't feel like i need to have to separate myself from individuals because what i do as a, as a father is is just in me it's genetics and i'm not I'm, i don't have to share that experience with any other brother out there Right. It's just my experience. But to hear about the deadbeat fathers, the you know, I'm a mother and a father, so I'm celebrating Father's Day. It's it's a smack in the face right. for, for children who don't understand exactly what any of this is going on. Right. And it's almost like it's a self-taught behavior that we sort of inherit. It. So so at so fathers. So basically, you know, OK, like I was raised in a in a in a pastor's my parents were both pastors. Mm -hmm. We were taught the word of God and how we should live and how the brothers should act and how the, my sisters would have to act. So explain to me the role of a father raising a daughter or raising a son. Is it the same? What do you teach your daughter that you would teach your son? Well, well can I just take on to what John said? Yeah. I yeah. do definitely agree that um, there's a difference between a father and a dad. And so like he's saying, like, you know, if you have given your sperm to someone and that could be in a myriad of ways, you have fathered a child, but it doesn't make you, you know, a dad. And I feel like um, when it comes to fathering in the home and being a, a dad in the home, um, I always immediately first go to provision because I am going to go to the bible based word now do women provide absolutely you know yes. but men um a stereotypically has been 
a provider for their family. The second word that comes to my mind is protector of that family. Mm -hmm. um, but what I like now is that we're in, we're asking fathers to do their own inner work so that they could be more than providers and protectors, but they can also um, be the generational curse breakers by their prayer life, by their emotional stability, by um, learning uh, the skill of saying how they feel instead of acting out how they feel. And doing that by example, Excuse another me. way is by showing up, not just being present physically, but actually mm -hmm. being present mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for your children at ma major events or just at home chilling, watching TV, actually being present, I feel like are some of the key components that I look at mm -hmm. as what a dad, a father would be to a child. Okay. I like to chime in um, when I think of fathers and all that you're saying, in addition to a teacher, mm -hmm. someone that can teach their children life, life It's something when a father can teach their child, OK, how to pray, how to ride a bike, mm -hmm. how to, you know, even a son, how to put on clothes. I remember now I, I'm, I was a single mom. You know, so I played dual roles and I didn't know anything. And I'm just going to say an example. I have two boys. And when it was time for them to potty train, oh boy, I was the one teaching them. Like, right. I think this is how you do it. You know, let's be honest. So yeah. I believe a father should be a teacher, not right. only um, just in everything. You know, I look at my father. He taught me how to pray. You know, he taught, he's a bishop. He taught me how to preach. Right. You understand what I'm saying? He taught me, okay, a man should provide. Like uh, Dr. D, you were outlining, you know, to provide and be there for your family. So I, in addition to all, I also believe a, a father should be the one to teach, teach their children. Um, you know, I believe education starts at home first. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. And if I can add to that. I mean, statistics shows like for teenage pregnancies, 25.3% of Hispanics, 25.8% of African-American, 11% white American, Native American counts for like 29%. Right. So then think about this. This is teenage pregnancy. A teenage boy is not a man. So the take on the responsibilities of being a father starts with the maturity of knowing exactly how to raise. You can't really raise anybody when you're being raised yourself. Right. So, so the true. adjustment from uh, the, 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 <laughs> the misconception is everybody's a father. No. Mm -mm. A teenage child is a, is a child growing who, whom by, by relationship became a father. It wasn't a matrimony and then we had a child. We we wanted a child, and we had a child. This right. is this is in most cases accidental. Right. So when you when you equate that into the into the equation, because these same children are going to grow up to be adults, and the, what they always say, the sins of your father. Do you right? That's that. What happened in the past is still present. Right. So those years that you're not able to be the father, guess what happens? Those are lost years, and those are very viable years, especially to a female. Who, in my case, females are more nurturing to their father until they learn that they need their mothers more than their fathers because a woman can teach a woman to be a woman and a man can teach a child, a boy to be a man. And I think our roles sort of switch at a certain age because yeah. my, my boys, I raised them. And it's funny, my wife and I, we just had a conversation about this. We're talking to my son. She was like, you know what? I realized this, you know, I can nurture them, but the only person in this house can teach them how to be a man is you. Right. 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 Um, I, I definitely want to add to that. And, and I guess I want to stir the pot a little bit because um, let's just say you have a teenager who mm -hmm. grew up in the hard knocks of life or whatever, um, but they have the wherewithal to provide, protect, and to be emotionally there. Because I know of some extremely grown people who don't have emotional maturity. So although you're physically of the age, <laughs> you're at the age where, you know, it's expected that you're a father, but your age 
can't be the only indicator. Um, and matrimony definitely isn't the only indicator because there are grown folks, 60, 70, and 45, that have the emotional maturity of a 12 year old. So when their child does something that they don't like, then you get a myriad of, um, how can I say it? Um, abusive Childish. tendencies that happen, emotional abusive, that they don't think is anything like this is just me. But no, you know, I definitely feel like there's a physical maturity, but then there's also that emotional maturity that I feel like all of us, and this is, and I'm not, you know, dad bashing, even women, we need to know that our emotional maturity needs to 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 scale. It needs to grow. So I'm just well, starting to a little bit. No, and I love I absolutely I, I love it because it's, think about this. When I hear somebody say, tell a man, be a you know, be a man. Right. Uh, what what else can I be? And you're right. right. There are some very immature men. But now Doc said mm -hmm. that immature man and ask yourself this. Was that an immature man man raised by another man? Or how was he raised? Because it has a lot to do with it. Does again? I like it goes back to being taught how to be a father. What examples do you see? Because I've seen, you know, I've seen in the culture, um, in, in certain cultures that I've seen, you have young men that have children at 18 years old, 16, 17 years old, but they have seen good role models. Mm -hmm. Like they will go out and work mm -hmm. at 18 years old, um, 10, 12, 16 hour day jobs just to provide because in their mindset, I must provide as a father. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to what examples do you see? Who's teaching you how to be a man, how to be a father? A lot of times when you find 60 year olds, 50 year olds, um, not working, but just, you know, not providing, not being a protector, not um, just being a lot of these uh, examples or, or characteristics of a father. No one taught them. That's right. 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 And, and, and to add to that, it, it, like, I wasn't, my father and I, we weren't together. My, mm -hmm. when he, my mother and father divorced when I was three years old. That was it. So my right. grandfather was like my step in father figure. And it was ironic because they gave me so much support that my grandfather knew that I did not want to even see a picture of my father. Wow. He took down, he took every picture out of the house so that he, he respected my wishes. And you know what? <clears throat> At age 27, my wife actually contacted my father and said, wow. you know what? I think you need to talk to him. And I was like, I don't know where yet. I don't, I don't want to talk to him. And guess what? Since 27, every single Sunday at eight o'clock sharp, every single Sunday we talk. Beautiful. And that's so it's, it, it and teach, I was, I was, I had a lot of self teaching, but I had some, I had some, I had some people that I mimic around me, that that to me showed the definition of what a man felt, you know, what mm -hmm. it was, and I wanted it inside because I had that that loss for having the presence of my father in my life at that time frame. And and you know what's so funny? It's um, and it's a short version. It's like when I went through cancer, two thousand twelve. 2000, yeah, 2012, I, I had a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And and when I say terrified, mm -hmm. I was 40 something, 40 something. My sister, I spoke to, I called my sister and I said, Hillary, this is what's going on. She said, call dad. Dad worked at the hospital. I called dad. Dad said, I will be your support system. So he went with me to all of my appointments and told the doctors, I'm here for my son's support. So I, this is why I was saying I was dedicating this show to my dad because he's he has taught me how to be a man. He's taught me how to, you know, he used to always say to me, his favorite line is, you make a mistake, knock off the dust off your feet, get up and try again. You know, you know the Jamaican stand. So it's like, I, I just, I'm grateful for his statues. Because even like my my other siblings, my my, my brothers, we all follow in the footsteps of dad. Like, for example, daddy loved to cook for Thanksgiving. We all cook now. <laughs> I love to throw it out of the kitchen. Right. <clears throat> Thanksgiving, I said, daddy, they gave me a turkey. I don't know what to do because I've never did a turkey. He said, he gave me the basics. He said, you go make your 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 turkey and, and, let, and videotape it and let me see what you did. 
And I did a great job and I started giving food to the beautiful. Beautiful. So if when you have a good father that yeah. gives you the instruction, like like I always hear women say, well, I didn't have any instruction how to raise my children. The men don't have an instruction. I would say maybe the instructions came from God and, you know, you train up the child. So when he gets older, he would know how to depart from the family and be and become a man. But some people don't have that instruction. Instruction. And, and I think mm -hmm. we need to talk to those individuals because if, if I was listening to this and I'm a father that, you know, I don't have a father in my life and I don't have a role model as a father in my life, it sort of still leaves me lost because to, to, to have an example of a good father or to mimic a good father, I don't have. So what I think I, I think to those individuals, I'll say this. The, it starts with you. You know, when you want to break a generational curse, you have to start with yourself. Yes. So you can figure out how you don't continue on that curse. Just be the better father to that child that wasn't the father to you. Right. That means that you have to deplete the emotions from the relationship. No matter what is going on in a relationship, you want to make sure that that child doesn't feel that effect of it. And, you know, you keep a standard. You don't use the child as a pawn. And I find that happens a lot into young relationships as well as older ones too. The only way you're going to see your child is if you bring some financial contribution to yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. That finance will go faster than you than you blink your eyes. But that, <laughs> that emotional touch, taking that child to the park, you know, getting ice cream, just just spending that bonding time, that goes way further than financial, you know, situations. I. I agree. And I just want to add just a, like how Xavier shared a little testimony. And this is just for single women to kind of add on to what John said. I remember when I became a single mom, uh, when my myself and my daughter's dad split. And as Christian single women, we should operate differently. We should move differently. And whoever is listening, if you are a Christian single woman and you're raising your children, um, if you know that the, your children aren't going to be harmed, allow the father to have access to their child, whatever that looks like, and don't boss it around. It is not your job to say, call between five and six. If the man calls at uh, 9.30, the child wants to talk to the dad, and he, he'll lose five minutes of sleep. So what? Don't boss everything around because of that spirit of control. When um, myself and my daughter's father, we separated, God spoke to me. Rewind that tape. God spoke to me right. and said, you have a relationship with your father. I said, yes, Lord, I do. He said, allow that your daughter to have a relationship with her father at all costs. So if there were times when her father got busy and he did not call and check up on her, I would text him, hey, is everything okay? Now, that went against how I felt. But I would say, hey, is everything okay? Are you good? I just want to make sure because, you know, Tink miss you or whatever. And then the love and compassion that I showed to him, it then would cause him to call, hey, hey, he'd take her out. And, and that's all for her. I, there was no benefit in that for me. But Christian women who are listening, if you are raising your children and if the father wants to have a relationship, please open up that door. Please let God lead you and guide you and get yourself out of the way. I just wanted to put that little nugget in there. Well, and, and Dion, can I, add, can I add this a little bit? Because you mm -hmm. just spoke so elegant about that. Uh, can I add just to this? Even the ones that don't want to have a relationship, Fact. it's not an option. It's it's not an option. to Once you become a father, there is not an option not to become a father. Now, there's an option to be a dad, right. but there's not an option to be a father. So I don't care if it's every single holiday, you remind that individual, you have a child. You, If you got to take him around the family, if you got to just walk, to, to take him to the person, you don't have to keep him with him. You just want to put eyes on him and show him, listen, I'm not here to cause you any problems. I'm just here to show you that you still have a child and that this child will not grow up thinking that he does or she doesn't grow up thinking that they, they don't have a father. Right. That that to me, the obligation, I think we I think the men sort of get out of the obligation like it's a choice. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. You brought this job. No matter what. I would like to I would like to celebrate all those fathers that 
was in or a dance that chose to be in a child's life. Mm -hmm. um, period. You know, that see the lack of that child, what they had, and say, you know what? I want to be that role model. I would like to be that person to be in that child's life and help that child. I, those who are listening or the fathers that are listening, I'd like to celebrate you, celebrate you so much. Because there are fathers, like you said, um, John, there are fathers that don't want to do have anything to do with their yeah, child. You're right. I mean, literally. I mean, you can bring them around the family. You can, they is like, no, I'm gone. Right. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And guess what? It's up to that mom. So, but then there are programs like Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Yes. Um, there are, you know, grandparent programs. I, literally, I took advantage of them. <laughs> there are programs that are out there that will, and even those who are in the church, mm -hmm. brothers that are in the church that will say, you know, I'll take on your son. I'll teach them. I'll be there for them on their birthday. I will buy them gifts. Right. Those godfathers, seriously, those those adopted aunts and those uncles, literally. Um, yeah. So I celebrate you on Father's Day. Yes, you yeah. may not have your own child, but you took the time to take on another child to call your own. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think celebrate Robert, that. You, can, you can deal with the psychological aspect of it too as well, because I'm going to say it's, is it really the child that they're with or is it the relationship they're with? Because when you end the relationship, you're not ending it with the child, you're ending it with the person. And some guys you truly feel that in. if I can't mm -hmm. have you, then I don't want to deal with the child. But that's not that's an option for that. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you say to the psychological aspect of, because I think it really is, psychological aspect of individuals thinking that there's a separation of choice. And I'll tell you a funny thing. My wife will tell you, she'll say, you're a better, you're a better father than you are a husband. And mm -hmm. that's because when I say I devoted my time to making sure our kids are taken care of, that's what I do. Now that my youngest is literally graduated from high school, all the way to college, now I can devote my time to being a better husband because right. guess what? That's that barrier of being a father is, is you know, I'm a, right. I'm a consultant now as a father because they're, they're growing up. <laughs> but <laughs> what do you think about the psychological aspect of it for us? Like, men believing that they can just walk away from a responsibility. So we're going to, if, if I had to put a title on it, I would say they're in neglect and abandonment. And listen, that's a learned skill. You know, um, it's a choice. It is a choice. Even though they gave sperm to produce, it's still a choice to stay. It's still a choice to engage. And sometimes that abandonment and neglect is just literally passed down where right. they walked out on. Have they experienced that in other areas of their life? So if they don't have the woman or if the woman puts them on child support and hurts their ego or feelings, mm -hmm. they say, I'm going to get to the woman by not engaging with, oh, she wants this so bad. Oh, I'm a show her. I'm not going to engage with the child because I'm trying to get all of that is it goes back to that emotional immaturity and it goes back to uh, neglect and abandonment. Mm -hmm. And so then we have a generation. We can now open this up to making it bigger. Right. Then we're spearheading to now a, a community of people who have abandonment issues, neglect issues mm -hmm. and have not learned to be emotionally mature. So then you have our young boys sometimes who can shoot another black man because there's no honor there. Right. I don't honor it. I don't honor it. You know, I, when my experience has only been filtered in neglect and abandonment. So I'm going to be quiet because I know I'm going to set it off here. No, so. no, no, no. I think that's 100% appropriate because if you think about it, like child support is a measure of punishment that some individuals use to support, to punish the father. And then, and in that, in that sense, the father has a reason now to sort of, and that's not a legitimate reason, but to them, they have a reason not to be a part of a child's life. So it, it's, and then you think about this, what about the countless of individuals who are not the fathers, who are being accused as fathers, taking care of the kids, and then come to find out years later that that's not their fault, they're not biologically written to that child. The heartbreak, the emotional turn that it has with them, the loss of relationship, um, and maybe even possible incarceration for for something and they, that they didn't know 
that you say it's it's like a tricky sword between relationships. And I think we sort of navigate toward the worst and the best. At any point, a child needs a father. Doesn't matter if it's yours yeah. or not. That right. child needs a father. So which means is when God places something in your life, that's what he wants you to take care of. Right. And 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 with with us as men, if we can get through to young men understanding that <clears throat> The reason you're in the life of that child is because God sees fit that you have an example to show them. It may right. change the direction of individuals trying to figure out, am I the biological father or do I want to be a father? Guess what? It's not a choice. This day was made for this day. And if that Even, child grows up to be a Barack Obama or, you know, a, a Thurgood Marshall, you don't know. You don't know. You don't That's know. True. So get into that child's life. And, 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 and even like what, even like for, for me, I'm a God. I'm a godfather. I don't have any children, but I have young ladies and young men that sit down with me and want to have a chit chat. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm in my fifties, so I give them the best advice that I've like the teachings I got. I might pour it into them and and say, look at it this way. Have you looked at it this way? So you know, I educate them how I should know my knowledge, and I pour into them, and then they say. Wow, I didn't see it that way. So I'm glad that I'm I'm have a lot of God children, some new God children, you know. And I, I just thank God that we're able as men to pour into them. Even even the even like the, the sisters too. Y'all pour into the men, the young men, and I'm I'm just grateful for that. And so everyone, go ahead, John. One more question. One more. I'm answer. sorry. I'm sorry. I have two of the most powerful segment. women on this right here on this segment. Yeah, it just touched me just a second ago to realize that the, there's a question that hasn't been asked that I think that the majority of individuals will relate to more than anything in the world is. Can right. I ask you both a question? How do you feel having to assume the role as primary guardian when a separation occurs? Hmm. Um, I think but, um, myself and Dr. <clears throat> um, Nancy, we had... Uh, we walked a similar journey, but it was different. I think the outcomes were different. Um, for me, I didn't ever really feel alone. I, I didn't feel, and and like like Dr. Uh, Nancy, I had my dad. Um, and then my daughter's dad definitely engaged. So um, I didn't feel alone raising my daughter. You know, he was a part. So I can say that he he was a part. He provided, he did his part after the split. Um, I will just add this little bit for Christian women. A lot of times, um, if you're raised in a strict holiness, Pentecostal, apostolic ministry, you're taught, you know, keep your legs closed. I mean, we're adults. So I'm going to say it how I say it. Keep your legs closed. Don't have babies out of wedlock. And for some of us Christian women, we do that. But then we get married and have a failed marriage and you're still a single mom. When you show up to fill out paperwork, they don't know if you had the baby. It's when you know you still a single mom, and that was the disappointing thing. I said, "Lord, this is still on me." That was the disappointing thing. But when it came to rearing her, I have to honestly say, "To God be the glory." But I didn't feel like I was alone. What about you, Nancy? Well, my story was a little different. Right. Um, Yes, we 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 do share similar paths in terms of uh, being in the church, um, but I was I all I have four children, um, and I was married, and they were all with the same man. Um, unfortunately, we we went our separate ways, um, got divorced, and that was it. That was it. Um, it was similar to what John was saying in terms of. He, um, if, because he wasn't with me, then he's not with the children, um, which was very painful. Um, so my journey as a single mom, it was traumatic for my children. So they had to deal with the trauma of not having an active father there. So it was painful. It was very painful um, raising them um, every Father's Day, you know, um, going to 
them being in elementary school, going to um, Dad for Donuts, it was me. Um, yeah, it, it, it was painful. So, and they didn't understand at the time, like, why everybody got a dad and I don't. Yeah. And I say, you know, well, it's just different. Some people, it's just different. It's different forms of, of a family. Right. Um. And you find yourself so, making excuses for 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 the, for the absence of. Yes. Well, yeah. I, I I was more. I told them the truth. I didn't hide anything from them. I just told them what it was. You know. Um. Then it came a point in their time in their life, or you know, that they he wanted to be involved in their life, but they didn't want him. Yeah. You know they. You know you have to go through court. They was like, Mom, why do I have to go to court all the time? And it's because he wanted to see his children. And of course, you have to do court hearings and stuff. And they didn't want that. They didn't want to be, they didn't know him. Right. They didn't know him. And when he would come around, I remember a, a, a particular story. I would never forget it. My daughter was about four and he came to visit. And I went over his mother's house and I brought him. And my other daughter was like, Dad. And my four-year-old said, daddy, and walked right past him. <laughs> just ran right past him. But she didn't know who he was. And, who I, he was. Just, right. and I just, yeah. she would just, you know, mocking her star older sister. And I just thought it was so funny, but I would never forget that moment. And that was, like, now now they're adults. Yeah. They know who he is. Um, they how have, does it affect I, them? How, how do you think that it affect them growing up like that without, without the presence of? As a as a, as a lot, adult, as a, a lot, like I said, little li different areas of where a child will grow up. So, like my son did sports. You know, they 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 did basketball, they did wrestling, they track. You know, when you would think a father was there, they were. It was me. Yeah. Um, every Father's Day was painful. Every Father's Day was painful. I don't know how to explain that in order. You know, um, now they're they're accepting it. Now they they accept what it is. They you know um, they know who he is. I've always taught them to respect him, um, not to from a biblical standpoint. You know, just honor him. And they used to argue back with me, Mom. I'm gonna honor somebody I don't see. I mean, well, you know, still honor him. You know, he still is your father. You know, when you see him, I, I try as a mom not to say anything bad towards him. You know, I thank God for my sisters. That's all I can say. But, you know, in front of my children, he was still their father. Right. He was their father. And um, and I be, because of that, I went, even in talking to him now, he's grateful. He said, thank you for raising the kids. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I don't know. They, they, it, it was, it was something, John. You know, it was something. It was a journey. It was a journey, but um, it took a lot of prayer. And I reached out. I, I was a type of mom. I reached out. I, I had God has blessed me with some wonderful brothers. I reached out to them. Um, uh, I, I reached out to them, and 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 they they in a lot of times they knew like okay, Nancy need a break. And they would take my boys um, and my girls, you know, my, my father was, he was in another state at the time, but um, they would spend the summers with them. So it, 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 they received that father um, role model in some sense, you know, but actually being in the home was not there. It was well, tough. And I think, and I think that's, that's the, the essence of the whole conversation when we yeah. just what we talked about is mm -hmm. because some people just don't understand what it really looks like at the at the the middle part of raising children but going through that process and having to deal with the consequences at the end of it and then the individual who's not there just basically showing up for the parade and not not doing the work it's not easy it's not easy at all so <laughs> I, I commend you I definitely commend, I commend both of you guys Thank you. That. Thank you, thank you, and and and, and we'll. <laughs> Did he lose we'll our host? Say, he'll Xavier will be back. 
Will just, <laughs> this is a little comic relief. Uh, <laughs> we'll just say that, but again, we want to kind of conclude this part of the conversation by saying hats off to amazing fathers, the fathers who are present. Yes. That's who we think you are. Oh. You know, yes. my, father, my, my, my dad, Pastor Jones, and my son's father, like, thank, celebrate them. I have um, nephews that are in their 30s or late 20s. They are amazing fathers. Like, I just want to say thank you because your role is so necessary. It's so important to both their daughters and their sons. So, Xavier, yeah. <laughs> what happened, friend? I don't know. I was sitting here talking, and it just went. My phone, my laptop just went off on me. We recovered. We, we gotta enjoy well. this laugh, y'all. I just tell you. <laughs> I just gotta enjoy this laugh. I just <laughs> you didn't want me to be. I'm sitting here typing something <laughs> to go on the next segment, and my laptop just re, it just restarted itself. You know what um, it was? Your, your, your laptop actually went on strike for June 10th. Yes, yes. So it went on strike. It said, "I am not working today." Yes, it is. So uh, we can we can. But so that means while you was well, while that I was going, it was still recording. Yes. Yeah, it was. Thank God, thank God, because I thought I lost. So let's go on to um, Juneteenth. What is Ju really the Juneteenth um, name? Oh, wow. Whoa. Emancipation. Right. Can I, can, I, can I be honest with y'all? Listen, I'm just going to be honest. When yes. I was growing up, I didn't hear about Juneteenth. That's right. And, yeah. I, and, I, I, and, I, and I was in New York City, grew up in Harlem. Harlem african-american station literally and yeah. i did not hear about juneteenth we, at just, all I, we, they even the taught black history i'm being honest they would talk black history in school i mean i went to predominantly african-american school from elementary school on up even college the hbcu and, and I think we a lot of it did, had to do with with texas because it was originated in texas yes that that it was even the textbooks textbooks was probably in it would indicate that Juneteenth, a Texas recognized independence for African Americans, but and because that, of that, it, mm -hmm. it didn't become a northern like most of us were northern. Yeah, northern raised. Born we're not raised. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, 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 Nancy and I were Jamaicans. We wasn't raised that we knew about. <laughs> we that's, even, that's, even, that's even that's even that's even worse. I found literally I Juneteenth actually when I was in the military, and one of my uh, uh, shipmates was actually from Texas and it was Juneteenth. He was like, I'm celebrating Juneteenth. I said, dude, what is that? And he looked at me like, you don't know what that is. Oh wow. So in my in my ignorance, I learned knowledge. You know, and it's and it's and it's that it's now being recognized of course federally. So I think that it's getting a lot of more movement with it. But at the end of the day, it's and it and we it, it's it's no it's a separation between African American independence and American independence. Mm -hmm. And that's that's going to be the fight for the future, I believe. That individual is going to try to make it look like, well, you want your own independence? Yes, we want our own independence. Yeah, First of all, we didn't want to be off. <laughs> Celebrate. Yes, all the And you know, even now, there are only a few states that really acknowledge it as a holiday. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Even yeah. now, it's not many. I know I Maryland is one, it, Georgia. The, the, you know, it's, a, it's about six of those. Yeah. Sorry. Well, then again, let me take that back. And maybe more red states that recognize it than blue states because Texas is a red state and Georgia. Yeah. Okay. And they still recognize it, which means that the population is being heard. Mm -hmm. But if you see, you take that into a lot of account for a lot of different places, and, and does it matter to some people? That some areas it might not matter. Colorado, it might not matter. Utah, right. it might not matter. But right. it should matter to those who matter, which is us. And we we're gonna have to fight for it to be a day to celebrate. If it's not for us to celebrate, but for our children and the to celebrate, right? And I, they even said that it's not even acknowledged in California as official yeah. holiday state. Mm -hmm. wow. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's, it's yeah. something. But Cinco de Mayo is, but I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. That's because people. That's because drinking is associated with it. That's yeah. just like um, St. Patrick's Day. That's because people can drink. <laughs> Right. It's you know, drinking is associated with it. So but I do believe that we're on the cusp of this holiday being an actual holiday for all states. And 
the celebrations will get larger. I'm glad that we're now talking about it. I'm glad that our African-Americanism is being celebrated and it's starting with us, that we are it honoring is. who we are and where we've come from. So I think if we do more of that, this is going to be a real national holiday. So, so do you think it would be overshadowed? And Xavier, you probably can answer this with, 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 with clearness. I, I'm a big believer that if celebrations, you need to like look at look at Fourth of July. The Fourth of July is celebrated in the only month that it's celebrated in. There are no other holidays that are celebrated if you count Flag Days and all the rest mm -hmm. of the holidays that may be associated. But think right. about this now: what are the, this is not only Juneteenth in, in this month, but it's also Pride Month too as well. Right. What happens that is overshadowed by one celebration than the other, or can it be combined? as it's ended or can it be individualized as its own individual holiday and still exists throughout the throughout throughout time well it's like martha luther king they they martha his actual birthday is the 15th and yeah. whenever that monday so I say his his birth his <laughs> actual birthday is the 15th and it's a friday so the holiday would be the monday where everybody get off and that everyone gets paid for martha luther king i i don't i'm not sure if they're they might give you the holiday off, but I don't know if they're paying you for the holiday. Well, it might be like the Martin Luther King. You know, you get President's Day or Martin Luther King Day off. Right. You don't get both. So you can right. observe one or you can work for the other. They may do that, but and I'm it, it you it's gonna be a, this was this was I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this debate down the line on the page. Same here, because because even like um, I didn't even realize Father's Day and Juneteenth <laughs> fell on the same day. I was like, "Oh my God, for real!" So then, just imagine if Pride was the nineteenth, we would have we would be celebrating three holidays mm -hmm. the same yeah, one day. Happy yeah. Pride, <laughs> right? Happy Pride. <laughs> but um, what you were saying, John? So you think that I think I'm gonna get his recognition. I think it, it's, it will. the fact that they made it a federal holiday yeah. gave it gave it a lot more power. Now, what we have to do is, as African Americans, we got to learn how to celebrate ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Not waiting for somebody else to celebrate That's us. It. Because at the end of the yes. day, if this is our independence, then let's celebrate our independence. We are a yeah. we are a viable spending power in the United States of America. Yes, we are. If we spend if we spend our money on on and I'm not and I'm not trying to divide the country. I'm just speaking in general. If we spend money on the fourth, like we did on, and well, we spend money on the nineteenth, like we do on the fourth. You will get heard. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Our money is power, absolutely. But oh. and not only that. Again, I as I always <laughs> say, I feel like we set so many trends. We are the trendsetters. We are. Um, we are the culture. And so if we celebrate, if we create parades, if we create platforms, concerts, um, everybody's going to want to be a part of it. I mean, we are the stuff. Yes. It is what it is. We got the heat. We got the juice. We always have and always will. We got the rhythm and the beat. We are right. the hit thing. And, <laughs> and you hit it You hit it right on the head with I that. I mean, it is the truth. The black artists can go out and do concerts. You can have, yeah. I mean, we don't own barges to put fireworks on, but we, we can rent them. <laughs> we can do our own fireworks. And that's the thing. We have to make it important to us. Yeah, we can't. We're not. We're not doing June two for for other people to make it important to us, are we? No, no. we're not waiting right. for them. Right, right. We <laughs> creating our own. That's and it. as I, I, I literally took a second to Google what are some Juneteenth activities near me. And I love to see that it's actually a diverse culture of people who <laughs> want to celebrate, you know, who wants to help us celebrate. But I do see that there are a lot of African-Americans that are starting things up. And I love that. I mean, if it who knows how to party? Well, we do. <laughs> so, <Every day>. right. <laughs> so I think that this will um, give it a few years. Let it. It's marinating right now. It's sitting in the refrigerator with the seasoning on it. But give it a few years, and it's going to be phenomenal. Watch. And it couldn't happen at a better time. Listen to this. You got right. sun. You got great weather. You got you got engagement. You got opportunities. It's just it's just time to really just again re celebrate ourselves. Learn how to celebrate ourselves stop waiting to depend on somebody else to give us recognition i look at i look at my I, like I don't that. 
I don't, I don't, I, I prefer to work on Martin Luther King's day and take off the following. And let me tell you why. His wow. fight was for me to have the equal opportunity to be able to do things. Equal. So on that day, I'm recognizing him. I recognize that he fought for that day. And then I'm going to take off the day that has nothing to do with anything, but I'll take the next day off. That's just me. And I've done that forever because I wanted to be, I wanted to give an acknowledgement to him for, and saying thanks, you know, for allowing me to have the position and opportunities that I have. So do you, let me ask everyone a question. Do you think that they, because of when it started back when, do you think that they would ever pay, pay black people like how they do the Jewish people and other ethnic groups? Do you think they would ever recognize um, it started 1835, 1836, something like this? No, 1865, something like that. Um, that do you think that they would ever recognize the slavery back then when we when we, they came free? Do you think that they would ever say, okay, all black people that came from a slaves, ascendant, would get paid? We wouldn't pay taxes or anything like that. You know, I don't. No. no, there's a the reparation. I think we get that. that I, I, I want to stay. You know, I will go off topic on this. That's all right. Uh, That's all right. Go but, ahead. We're listening. It's, <laughs> uh, the the forty acres of the mule is, is not going to happen. Not going to happen. And 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 I I I urge every American, please look up the history of the 40 acres and a mule. Just look it up first before you pass judgments on reparation. Right. Because then you will understand the reason why the fight is there. That's right. It's That's not right. because we're, we're just, we're, at, we're begging for something. This is something that was given to us. Right. And because of the value of which they what they gave us and what we made out of it, you, know, you hit on it perfectly. We made right. it hot. Mm -hmm. That same areas, those same areas that we're talking about now, the original areas, Look down at Florida and Atlanta and all those areas. Those are those are inhabited areas of the 40 acres and a mule. South Carolina, North Carolina. Those are some very inhabitable areas in which the 40 acres and a mule was given to us. But because right. of its profitability, it was taken away for us too. Rosewood, a community of filled with black uh, African Americans, was destroyed because of this its commerce. Black Wall Street, Kansas, was destroyed because of its growth and its wealth. Some say they were stories because of the oil that it had underneath of it. Whatever the fact is, we made every single area when we were united hot. We made it that way. We made it profitable. So right. now when we look at reformation for us, what would that even look like? You're going to give us one day off and take taxes off for one day and overcharge right. me the next day? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I just think, right, I just don't, um, I would love to see it, but right now, even with race relations, um, and I can't say it has increased. I feel like there's been layers that it's been peeled off and the way people truly feel has come to surface. I mm -hmm. can't see us being given anything. We will continue to work very hard for what we what we get personally. Right. I would love to see it though, but I, yeah. I, you can keep the mule, just give me the land. Give me the acres, ooh. <laughs> Do you <laughs> think- do you think that they will educate? Because I didn't grow up on knowing this. Me either. Like Nancy, the rest of us. So you think this, you think because it's a natural holiday since um, Biden put it into, um, into uh, what's the word? Observation. Observation. So it would be, in, it would be ingrained in school <laughs> where people learn their history. Because now black black history is being changed. Well, it, it, it's yes, it will, it will it, be. It's, gonna, it's ingrained because it's engraved anyway. The fact that it's federal, technically, we are being paid for because there are a lot of African American federal people that work to get paid, and non African American. So a payment is being done far as that aspect. But will it be engraved? Absolutely. But it's not Congress. It's not the president. It's us. The only right. way this is going to be important to anybody. Is if it's important to us. Look at again. I put pride in as an example. I watch how the the the, the movement, and I, I I can tell you, I was one of the most ignorant individuals when it comes to understanding 
the the culture of of our brothers and sisters, you know, white American, it doesn't matter that in in in, in the, the homosexual community. I had no idea about it until I had to figure out how to learn what it is. Because as a human, I want to be a part of understanding you, not just judging you. But right. the force in which pride has taken its toll, it is it is it is triumph over. It's tri- and in my opinion, it's even triumph over in some cases civil rights, because it has rec- it has been recognized and there is a force behind it. We have to do the exact same thing when it comes to recognizing ourselves as a as a as a as a race, we have yeah. to have the same exact force. What happened to the parades that we used to do? What happened to the marches? And as I said before, we talked on the last commentary, what happened to the NAACP that, that supports everything we do? Do you know if every single African-American gave $10 to the NAACP, it'd be one of the most wealthiest organizations today? If we gave $10 per pay every single, that's 52 weeks, in, I mean, 52 or 26 weeks pay periods in a week, that's 200 and something dollars per person, per African-American. It would be the most forceful organization to exist today. And it puts back into our own communities. Right. That's 40 acres of the mule right there. Well, I agree. I'm going to challenge it, let, you know, for a second, because our time is, is, is drawing nigh. I wonder if the reason why um, we don't get behind some of those larger organization is because of mistrust and because um, of fear of mishandling funds and the fear of, um, oh, when my son was incarcerated or my son was accused of murder, I needed the NAACP to back me up and no one showed up for me. You know, so it, it, it does get a little, you know, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying maybe, you know, that could be some of the barriers that we would see if we tried to implement something like, hey, guys, why don't we all give to this organization? Yeah, and that's community oversight is the key. It's having individuals that are rotating throughout that that, that community oversight too as well so it doesn't come stagnant. I think right. the longer you stay stagnant, the more you can be corrupt. But right. And that's even the positions and, and of power. The longer, you stay, the longer you stay in power, the easier are you to be corrupt. Mm-hmm. But right. I think if the oversight is there consistently, that we will have an opportunity to actually sort of wear away. Will it, will it go away completely? No. Right. Most of our, our, our historically black colleges are not being destroyed because of out, you know, not being funded. It's been destroyed because of misuse or misappropriation of funds. Facts. Right. right. So. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a good conversation. Yes. So what's your closing statements, everyone? Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll start. Um, Again, just to reflect back on Father's Day, I just want to say to all the fathers, thank you. Thank you for your time, your effort, your finances, your protection, and to the fathers who actually have fun with your kids. And I just want to encourage somebody, don't spend all your time working. Sometimes the kids just need you to have fun, have fun with your children. We want to say thank you. Thank you for showing up for them because you help build an amazing community if you uh, invest in healthy children. So thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Dr. Dion Smith. I'm a licensed professional counselor. I am also a pastor. My website is Counseling. If you would like to connect with me, please do. However, if you don't and you need my assistance with finding therapy, a therapist, definitely call me or I'm sorry, email me but you can always go to www.psychologytoday.com and find a therapist in your area. Let's all work together to work on ourselves. Thank you, D. Thank you, Dr. D, for being who you are. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Uh, My clothing would say, um, again, I celebrate. um, I celebrate fathers, celebrate you, celebrate dads, uncles, grandfathers, godfathers, everyone that played a role in a child's life. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I just celebrate you. Yes. Um, children are who they are because of you. Because of you. Um, thank you for your time, your effort, your love, your prayers. Thank you. Um, it's needed. It's needed. You are the pillars of the community. Men, the father. So thank you. 
Thank you. So, um, and with Juneteenth, continue to teach, educate our African American community, let them know what is Juneteenth, teach our younger generation, teach anybody around you, put it on social media, put it out, let everybody know what the day is all about, and let's come together and make it happen. We yes. are the ones that can make it happen. Um, go on the borders of culture, wh wherever, tell everybody. Um, and we, and as the years go on, it will be in the textbooks. Yes, it will be a day off. Yes, everybody will get paid for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if I should prophesy that, yes, Lord. <laughs> it, it will be. It will be. Managers. Okay, have to be that one to escalate it. Yes, I'm saying it. Man, <laughs> they have to share it abroad. <laughs> let everybody know. Yes. Our black African American managers, I'm speaking to you. Yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yes, we are the ones that can educate and tell everyone about it and the importance of. Yes. Of why. Um, the importance of. So I am Dr. Nancy Watson. Yes, I am a pastor as well of New Life Ministries in Dover, Delaware. Um, so I can be reached at nancywatsonministries.org. I am a licensed social worker as well as certified coach, life coach. So I'm here for you. Um, you can reach out to us. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Chan D. It was an honor being with on with you all. It was a journey. Okay. It was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Brother John, your closest so, um, statement. So I, I'll say I'm a combined the Father's Day and Juneteenth because both are fragile. Both are fragile in the meaning that I, I believe that we have to give more life to both of these days in order for it to be consistently celebrated and honored the way it should there's no way it's not we're not talking black father's day we're talking father's day completely yeah absolutely and i, I say that because we have to accept our role as protectors and leaders yeah and stop whining about what is who's not recognizing it. i recognize as you can see on this panel and every single one we do i am a very i'm an apex black african-american male but i am a I, I am an apex father too as well and i'm not just a father to one i'm a father to anyone who needs guidance i don't care your race your color your creed your sexuality your standards your structure i believe that if god place you in my presence then i am here to give you any kind of advice that you need to be a father to those who need fathers amen the second is the juneteenth thing like i said we have to recognize ourselves we have again stop it's, it's the remorse and the self-pity. We're not doing that. We're, 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 we're 2022. We're taking charge of our own destiny. We're pushing our own structure. We have the platform. There are no restrictions. And now it's time for us to do the work to make an example of what it is and let everybody else enjoy what we put together to celebrate. Yes. Now we become, we become functional. So I'm John Bryce, of course. I am uh, one of many things that I don't think I've ever approach to everything that I do. So restaurant <laughs> owner, I'm a licensed nurse home administrator. I'm a mentor. I'm also a public speaker too as well. So if any engagements for public speaking, by all means, I'm always willing to be there and do that. My, You can reach me via email. My email is both Gmail and Yahoo. It's up and coming, U-P-I-N-G-C-O-M-I-N-G. And on, I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. It's John Bryce. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. So you can reach me any way possible. If you just want advice, you just want a conversation, you just want to see. And I'm very good at leadership. I am I'm 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 a leadership coach that 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 coaches leaders to be leaders because just because you have the position doesn't mean you have the the, the education or the knowledge to do so. Right. So you can always reach me. And Xavier, oh. Dr. D, Dr. Nancy. I appreciate I, as usual, I always appreciate you guys. And no hair twirling. That's right. We did good. We spent our time. But look, I like the idea, Xavier, um, to have a show about leadership. John, oh, yes. about now you're talking. All his Come on here. Next month, his month, next month. Wellness That's and, you know, the topic. Because I love what he said. I mean, yes. We do need leadership coaches. We yes. do. Yeah. That would be and amazing. We, please leave people with understanding this. Don't, I say this all the time. 
It's the person, not the position. Stop living up. I have a thousand different titles, but the only one that matters to me more than anything is my name, John Bryce. Because that's the only thing that goes with me with every single title, every position. Right. The only well, thing. Except- so be the example for that position. <laughs> Don't let that position be the example for you. Right, right. Well, everyone, thank just, you. I was about to go somewhere. But yeah. <laughs> I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I just, I just, I, Lord, I, well, he said, you know, the only thing that goes with you, to y'all just like, man. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that goes with you, he said, is your name, right? <laughs> I said, except for woman. You know, we we we, we changed our names. <laughs> anyway, that's another oh, topic. Oh, we gonna break. We we change our. Honey, we could be we could be na- <laughs> Listen, but anyway. listen, you become. But but that's what they say. <laughs> every great man is a great woman, and that's that's the hidden shadow of making that name. You're making that name more powerful by your presence. Oh, wait a minute, John. Okay, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Come on, Auntie. Hold on. I, did he say this on purpose, studio audience? Yes, he, he did. did. Behind? I know you didn't say behind. See, see, you didn't say behind in 2020. You stand with your man. Do that. No, no I'm so sorry good. because stop, stop. according on, to on. the scripture, see? no, 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 I'm going to finish my statement. According <laughs> to the scripture, we would not take it from the, your back. We would take it from your rib cage. And the last time I checked, it was on the left or it was on the right. But it oh, wasn't God. The Praise God. So you you didn't, we don't stand behind you, man of God. We stand with you. With you. God yes, bless I, you. I, the church finger goes up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll say this. Leadership has one role. One role. And you cannot, it can't be an oxymoron. Leadership has one role. You cannot, in one statement, ask me to be a protector and provider and be beside you because I can't protect you. Listen to me. Listen to me. I can't protect you. Listen to me. I can't protect you if you're right next to me. I need to protect you from all angles. I got you got my back so that nobody gets in front of you to have you. I'm going to take the first shot. We are the weaker vessel. In terms of that, you know, Xavier, you need to press a part two on this because I think this that this is, right here. I'm, about to, I'm telling you, I'm gonna take this right look, here. Look, look, you see the men up there? You see the men? This we them? get it to we, now. See, ain't no, ain't, look, come on. This right here, Xavier. Listen, this is what now, I, I, I believe. De- 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 I hear, can I just chime in just a little bit? I just now, I do believe that the, the, the spiritual context, in terms of where we, you know, how we were developed, yes, 100%. and the Bible also talks about we are the weaker vessel. So, I do believe that the men have a presence. Okay, D, I, I know we, she's like, she's going to take me. But they do have a presence, um, a, a stronger presence than a female. A lot of females may disagree with me. I, I know you are. I know you are, women. I know you are. I know you are. But listen, I agree with that. Also. We are the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean that we're weaker in terms of character. Okay? I'm not talking about that. But in terms of strength, we are. Okay, I'm going to pull okay. back. Dr. D is looking at me like... Dr. D is looking at me like... I am. I am. Look, 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 the words in the Bible also were translated and transliterated, right? So we have to make sure that we are defining whatever that weaker word. We need to get that original text to see what specific definition is attached to that. I agree. Physically, we bear children. We are physically less Mm -hmm. strong. That is all. No. Physically, no. we are no. Listen, there is no you no. Cannot I, 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 allow no I'm me to finish. Wait, wait. Let, let, let him finish, Doctor John. Let, let, let him finish. Let, 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 we are Xavier. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to be clear that yeah. I I don't consider myself a feminist, but and I actually have a lot more traditional values than most feminists. How? Ever, <laughs> I absolutely 
would like a man to be uh, my protector, but I am also his protector. We're, right. We can't just look at physical strength in, in the area of protection. Women have a six sit. Hold it. I am not done. I, I, I do. me <laughs> no, no, go ahead, Dia. Let, let her go. Let her Listen, go. Go ahead. <laughs> men, you think of how we were originally brought into this world. The man had to use whatever he had to kill food, to bring it to the home. The women prepare it. I, I mm. get that. But women, almost in, not only in humans, but in animals, we have a sixth sense that is just as needed as your physical strength. Meaning, we are your eyes. We literally are your eyes eyes right literally why because that was designed to keep our young safe god gave see we use our sixth sense now to track y'all cheating okay we use our sixes <laughs> now no no that's real we use our sixes now to say oh no you lying mm -mm. you wasn't where you said you was Literally, we use our sixth sense now to pick up on lies and we can smell mm -mm, something not right. But our original sixth sense was to keep our young and the household and the family safe. So, yes, I definitely agree. Men, you are our protectors. You, there are going to be times you stand in front and you leave. But my brother, there are times where my the church going to see <laughs> further than what Amen. you see in my job is to guide, is to let you know, I sent danger ahead. We are beside you, my friend. Yeah, you so can go I just, I'm just going to say it this way. You can go ahead. Allow your essence to be the secret weapon that the world doesn't catch on to. While I take these blows, you're that one in the bag that's guiding me. You're my ear. Listen to we got to end this show. Yep. I, I I did uh, no interruption. Just listen. You're the one that's giving me the sight, the vision, the hear, the listen. But let me take the blows. I don't okay. want that. I don't want that to be replicated with you because if fighting two battles, I'm going to lose every time. Right. I'm going to lose because okay. I can't. I can't see being. I can't see my wife being attacked and me not fight for it. But right. then I lose my leverage right. because at the head of the household. I'm losing my leverage of protecting when you're trying to be my protector. Allow He's me, protector. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Allow me to do the job that I was here to do, which is protect and provide, uh -huh. but also enjoy the provisions of my protecting and advising without yep. trying to be my equal, listen to me, without trying to be my equal, because if I wanted to marry another apex, I'm no apex. I want to marry well, watch a man. This. Why I married because... a beautiful woman who I want to take care of and I want to make sure that she's taken care of. And she's smarter than me. Watch on all why, why is it that when women say we walk beside you, why does that immediately make you think that we want to be your equal in a way where we're trying to emasculate you or take away your power? What I am saying is, yes, no, I I, no, 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 wait. What I am saying is, yes, I would like for you to leave the home, but I need you to not... I think the words of behind and stand quietly while I do this or that, I think that bothers me because at there we take that sometimes literal to mean sh you be quiet over there. I'm going to do all of the protecting. No, we also protect you. And yes, we could do it quietly. We could whisper, hey, baby, God showed me something. Don't take I-10 today. Go take I-12 because there's going to be an accident. We will. We also are your protectors in various ways. But, but listen, why does it seem as though it's uh, the military is the, the saying? It's the military side of you, John. That's why you say that. No, 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 no. Don't know. Listen exactly what I'm going to say. Okay. There's a military saying that says in the elite units that I have your six. That means I got your back. Do you know having my back is more important than having my front? Because here's the thing. <laughs> if I lose you, I lost everything. The mission is done. But if you, <laughs> if I know that everything behind me is 100% is going to be protected, then I have the ability, the carriage, the influence to be able to do everything in front of you. Exactly. And it's understandable that you see that the role, but how can I protect you if you're right beside me? Sir, 
I think I think both you and I are doing the same thing. I think maybe I have okay. When I think of behind, I'm going to have all your sides. I'll have your back, your side, whatever. If that doesn't necessarily matter. I feel like it's the placement of the sh girl. Look, like y'all, y'all women, y'all be quiet over there. We got this. No, we are partners in this life. We are well, we know partners that. in this life. And there are areas your blind spot will never see that God will show your wife first. That's right. exactly why the statement. But I like what you just did, though. I love it. Because that emotion is exactly the emotion that goes in our society. It's about position. It's about the title and position in which an individual wear. That has nothing to diminish your actual leadership, your ability, your strength. It's just the position and placement. It has nothing to do with anything else. The recognition of it is that you are one unit, period. Right. doesn't matter. And most of your attacks are never going to come in front of me. Most of my attacks, most of my attacks will try to creep up behind me. But guess what? When I got the strongest person in the world, I'm going to keep saying that word behind me because you know why? <laughs> it's ramping you up. It's ramping you up. And I like that. But well, look. think about it. I would, I would gladly, gladly, and, and, and it's positions where it's vice versa, where we have to play that role to be behind you to support you. Well, like you we know. Have to. So I'm Xavier, my hair. we're live. We're live. We are live, we and I, I, but you can edit this part. You can edit this for another no, thing. No, we no, gave our no, salutations. No. But go ahead, don't go ahead, Doctor Nance. This, I'm not no, this is good. I, all I can say, this is good. Um, we went way off. Personally, I, I'm just gonna say it like this. <laughs> I just can't. I don't know how to say it. Like this. I would want my man in front of me. I, 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 I don't know how to even explain more than that because I want you to be that leading guy. Right. I want you to. You need. I don't need to be leading you. Don't give I me. Agree. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> if I need to be leading you, then I don't need you. For example, it's just me. So I, I don't. I don't know. Xavier, is, you need to. I'm telling you, this, this needs to be a part about, two. Wait, 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 wait. wait so you can do it. because I. That's just y'all. That's just me. Okay, I can't. Two people can't lead at the same time. You just can't. You you just two people can't lead at the same time. You gotta have somebody ahead. The problem is, God Almighty, help me, Holy Ghost. The problem Jeez, is, a lot of men don't take the lead. So the women got to be put, got to be put. Come on, honey. You got it. Come on. I'm tired of that foolishness. We need our men to stand as men. Take the lead. Nobody, you need to go in and, and, and God, lead, lead, man. <laughs> I can't. We, I don't need to be all that. I need to come to you for something. Why I always got to be leading people. I'm a pastor. Yes. So my position is to lead. But when you in the house, come on. And listen to this. Even, even as a pastor, you need a man there. I, people can say what they want. I, you know what? You know, may the Lord watch. Maybe we need to do this one. Okay, wait, I'm going to say this statement. Hold on. Listen, yes, D, I don't I, want it to be misconstrued. I don't want my words to be misconstrued. Right. I am more of a traditionalist than I am a feminist, but I'm always pro-female. Okay. So I, I might stand in a, a lane by myself. I guess the way I think is because that I'm in front of you has been abused. That's and then true. we have those that are in front that diminish are condescending, that don't value that woman's that's voice, nothing. her discerning, then that's where issues arise. But I absolutely agree. If we're specifically just talking about safety and position, yeah, go ahead. Please get in front of me. Take the bullet, friend. Right. <laughs> yes, I definitely agree with that. But, but I God, don't you think want to don't misconstrue you? that position of be quiet. Look at men. Okay, now I'm going to get into no, 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 no. Stay, men but, 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 are. But I think you're mixing the water up. You're confused. I am, or you are. You're mixing the water up with the fact of mature men. 
and men. It's a difference. And why did you? Why would you stay in a relationship where you're not valued in the first place? Oh, that's fine. Right. Come on, listen to me. Come on. If you're in a relationship where you know I'll that person is taking over that. your credit <laughs> or, or, or just won't let you be a part of that that relationship, then the choice is yours. But Sir. when you're in that fabric of a relationship where that Sir. person is 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 just you're one equal, you're equally yo. Then there, there is no question about the maturity level. This is this Sir. is a mix of conversation, ma'am. Sir, can I'm I listening. Say this? What we what we aren't going to do is we're not going to make it even though it's just an individualized situation. If you look at, and I'm a I'm a lower my voice because I can, I know I can get hyped. When you look at America, women are paid at a lower rate for the same exact work. America and other countries are by far abusing women way more, be abusing their power. Sexual harassment is definitely where most of the time is where women are victimized. We, we literally just came through the Me Too movement where women historically held secrets for years to protect powerful men who were just taken down. So we're not going to make it seem like, oh, if you're in an abusive relationship and you're not valued, leave. No, we, this, is, this is the culture. Like, don't act like now if we're going to highlight the the problems in our African-American culture, you got to talk about the culture of how women are marginalized, sexualized, but not honored. We are just getting to the point. Kamala Harris is the first African-American woman, the first woman vice president. First, in all these years. So we're not going to act like this is Dion's or Dr. D's individual. Well, well, circumstances. And, Obama was the, no, and Obama was the first African-American. We're talking about women. Ever. There's been a thousand men. Mars and Venus. We're talking Mars and Venus. about women. But we're, we're Mars and Venus. We don't, we, don't live on a, we don't live on a country. We don't live on a earth that's just women. We live on an earth that's a unified earth between men and women. And I we know we have to have our own roles. And the thing is, the problem is, is when we don't identify what our roles is here, we can't play it. You can't lead an individual who's trying to lead you. Sometimes you got to take the lead and sometimes you got to follow up. I know how to follow, so I know how to lead. I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I'm not immature enough to not know how to, when I need to be led. But at the end of the day, I am a 100% apex male. And at the end of the day, as, as such, I am going to do my duty to protect my family, my wife, and my kids. I'm going to guide them as much as possible. And 90% of what I, what I guide with is what my wife instilled in me to listen to. So the world doesn't have to know the intersections of what happens in my household. But what I will do, I will stand in front and lead because I refuse to have my wife be the constant leader of every single thing in my life. And I'm sitting back like that. Like, listen, when I challenged you, I never said you, you like I never said lead or 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 boss you around. I never said that. When you use the term, you know, she stands behind me. No, I am beside you. <laughs> and I'm beside you in theory, in position. Sure, it's take the front, take the bullet. I don't care. Stand in front of me. You can stand wow. on my head. I don't care. But I'm talking about. Well, I hope you do care, because if, if they take the bullet, the you, you won't have me to protect you. The understanding is she is my partner. Well, that's she understood is not already. The, she's, not the little, she's not the quiet thing that um, I boss around either. She is my partner, and her voice is just as valuable as mine. However, in your home, your decision is the final decision. That's okay, but well, you I have, think that I think that you forgot. I think what I think what you, happened is John, you okay. have enough honor in you to say we'll discuss it. I'm going to hear the wisdom of my wife, but my voice might will be the final decision. That might that might be how it works in your house. And to to no. that, I say that's beautiful. No, the, the 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 voice is the voice of reason for both. But what I'm telling you is the lead aspect. You cannot ask a man to be a man if you don't want him to be that. You can't, I can't be a woman just as well as you can't be a man. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the confusion rose when it comes to households, especially African-American households. Is men, don't know, men don't know where they stand in relationships where women should be paid equally a pay as well as men, 100%. So what is my responsibility to be a provider for you? If you can provide for yourself, then what do you need me for? You got to understand what it takes to be a man. It's not me just identifying you as a woman, but me unidentifying myself as what is my position 
here as a male, what do I do here? Do I sit here, twiddle my thumbs, and allow you to do everything because you make all the money, or we make equal amount of money? Now, who makes the decisions in the household to protect this household? What is my role now? That's the confusing part of with America. Equal equality is one hundred percent suggested and encouraged, but again, being an African American male in a society where over forty to sixty percent of my African American counterparts are either in jail or non or non existence, where's my position now in my household to be a male? And what do I teach these male kids? I want you to grow up to be a prominent man. To to to, I have no idea what you're going to do when you get into your relationships or how to construct. But what am I teaching you now? Do I recognize women as strength? 100%. Every gift that I had started from the beginning was from my mom, the African-American woman that she was. So therefore, I acknowledge that. But what I'm saying is, and I will never back down from the position in which I stand, is that as an African-American apex male, I am going to 100% take care of my role of taking care of my household and making sure and ensuring that my job is done. The leadership is, yeah, I can be in front, but guess what? She has, she has, she has equal amount of responsibility in this household as I do. I, we celebrate you, I John. Digress. Happy Father's Day. We celebrate yeah, you. We this will a, agree a, to disagree in some areas and we agree in others. Uh, to all strong men who actually honor their wife's voice, I honor you definitely today. Happy Father's Father. Day again. And happy Juneteen <laughs> and happy Pride. So yes. everyone, thank you for this interesting. <laughs> we're gonna do a part two on this one. Definitely. You have to do, you have to do a part on leadership. I'm so wearing a black just, shirt. I'm wearing a black shirt for that one. <laughs> well, on leadership, or are we gonna do a, a, about the sexes? Because if we do all that, of, I think I, leadership. Oh okay. all, all above. I'm not all no, 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 no. I'm leadership. ready for that one. I know we do a leadership, but then we go back to that one. Okay. Right. So, or, or maybe part two, you know, leadership and the roles. So everyone, thank you for tuning in. This will be aired Father's Day to celebrate Father's Day, Juneteenth. And, and I also put happy pride for the, because we're not coming on until next month. Anyway, but I thank everyone for tuning in. It was an interesting conversation with the whole panel. This is always interesting. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, and next month I'll be talking about taking some individual um, interviews and I'm going to bring the panel back because this is always interesting to have Dr. Bryce. I call him Dr. Bryce today. Mm. Dr. Nancy Watson and Dr. D. And I am Xavier's Journey. So while everyone is talking, well, well basically everyone, I'm talking, everyone's listening. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. You can find me on Xavier E.R.S. Simpson on Facebook. And you can also find me on YouTube, Xavier's Journey. And if you want to um, email the show, you can either um, email us at Xavier's Journey, Z-X-A-V-I-E-R, journey at gmail.com. And I hope to hear from you again soon. Tune in for tomorrow. This will be aired on Father's Day. So everyone will have a, a mouth of a whole lot of air to listen to. <laughs> Thank you Look, so much, everyone. Xavier, this might, this might go viral, the last part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all right. That's hey, all right. But listen, yeah. they need to know one thing. The respect that we have for each other is just is, is 100%. Other. And that's right. why you can have open conversations like this. And like she said, we can agree to disagree. But at the end of the day, we got nothing but love and respect for each other every single day. Yes. And, the yes. Mm -hmm. and thank you, everyone, for the last show that we had, um, Mental Illness and Mental Disorder. 630, 680 views has been watching us. So while we're talking, we're listening. We are a panel of we love each other and we love to just disagree and and have good conversation. But everyone, thank you and tune in again to our next conversation. Have it's a gonna be hot. You it's better watch be the next one. <laughs> ready? Oh, I'm ready. I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna have my statistics. I'm gonna be ready, ready. Oh, you know I keep mine right. <laughs> Me too. And I'm gonna be the moderator. Make sure I keep everyone on on point. So. <laughs> This is bless you and God bless. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a great one, guys. Right. You All too. Right.